Welcome to Leadership Legacy Radio, where, where you inspire you to live your dreams, and encourage you to take massive action, and be your authentic and genuine self. We, we focus on three pillars. That's empowering youth, equipping leaders, and enriching marriages so that you can go out and dominate your space. If you're ready to dominate, you're listening to the right show. This is the Leadership Legacy Radio. All right, everybody. What's going on, our peoples? How's everybody doing tonight? Joining us? Let us know where you're checking in from. All right. Try to get this stuff set up so we can see if you guys are live. It's Friday night. All right. Looks like we're live. Thank you, Facebook, for letting us know that we're live. <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing tonight on this wonderful Friday evening? Hey, Jazzy. Jazzy, Jazzy in the building. All right, awesome. So tonight, we're going to talk about, this is uh, solid advice. Solid advice uh, for your relationship. So tonight, we're going to be talking about marriage. Um, this, this Facebook Live is brought to you by the Marriage Cookbook. All right, so... This is our... Are, are, are one of our favorite topics. I yeah. tell you, we love, um, definitely love talking about marriage. And before we even jump in to this, know that this applies to not only people that are married, but if you're in a relationship or, you know, thinking about getting married, if you're single, hey, Eric. you need to learn about relationships before you get into a relationship you know, before you commit to a relationship. And speaking of commitment, that's the one thing that, um, Woo, yes. wow, 37 so years. See, see, we're hoping to, to get there. We'll be there so one Jazzy, day. So Jazzy, celebrating 37 years. That love it, amazing. love it, love it. Yes. 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 Love it. Yeah, but you, you definitely, that right there, to get there, to get to 37 years, it takes commitment. No amount of knowledge, no mm -hmm. tools, nothing is going to work if you are not committed to that person. Because I, I will, I, I, we're going to be real. You know, there's going to be difficulties. There's mm -hmm. going to be challenges, whether just life overall or just in the midst of your relationship because you're too different individuals. Yes. You know what I mean? You're not going to find somebody that's exactly like you that likes everything that you like and does everything exactly the way that you do and you don't want that you know what i mean like hey, you Bobby. want to hey, to mommy. build one another up and um build on each other's strengths and weaknesses so i'm telling you have to decide and be determined to be committed in your relationship so if yeah. you're not committed no, no amount of information, mm -hmm. no tools are going to help. So that's the first step. Right. Be committed in your relationship. Hey, Don't Trisha, be, um, Darrell. you know, the people that every time something happens, you're thrown around the D word. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, like every time, word. that's like a curse word in a relationship. Every time you have a problem in your relationship, you start talking about divorce. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that. That is, Speaking death over your relationship and it's not beneficial to either parties. Like if you're constantly talking about, oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, you gotta speak it's not life. beneficial at all. So, and you know, one of the things, uh, one of the things that, that's super encouraging is, you know, as Jazzy shared with us and I put the comment up, she's been married 37 years. And that's awesome. But do you know what it takes to get there? Mm. Celebrating one. Ooh. You got to get started, right? And and oftentimes we think that relationship we want, that the the the, the life that we want, is going to just happen. Mm. This is why we talk about a marriage by design. You design it. You have to be intentional. You have to create it. So today we're going to talk about it, it, it's it, it's talking about the foundation. Mm -hmm. the The topic is solid um, advice for your relationship, right? And we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about, you know, um, the importance of of three components in your relationship that are going to, you know, uh, give you a a barrier of success, right? So, the first one 
Now, you know, we're not trying to, you know, um, push our faith on you, but this is something that we've realized is critical and essential to our relationship. And that's put in God first, right? So in the relationship, um, one of the things that you need to have is, a, is the cornerstone. And when you put God first and you allow him to, to help you, guide you, encourage you, motivate you and inspire you, um, the sky's the limits. Your relationship becomes, you know, it, it doesn't become a chore. It becomes, you know, um, a blessing. It becomes like a, a an exciting gift. gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, one of the things that we realize is that anytime we feel like we're off course a little bit, the first thing we do is kind of like, okay. Time to reset. Time to reset. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the source. Let's go talk. Let's go have that conversation. And it's so funny. Last night we were watching a movie. And, uh, uh, and it wasn't a movie. It was like a, sh- it was a show or something. And the guy, um, the, one of the guys was doing an interview and he said, Hey, um, why didn't you go to God first? And the guy said, well, I called, but he didn't answer or he didn't have time for me or something like that. Something silly. Mm. And I was thinking to myself, really, did you really try? <laughs> did you really try? Mm. Uh, because oftentimes we want to talk, but we don't want to listen. We want to tell God everything that's going on. And after we finish unloading, we just walk away. Mm -hmm. But if you just sit there and listen, Mm. he will help you. Mm. He will give you a good word. Yeah, that's right. I like Darrell's comment. Any relationship without God in the forefront is a problem waiting to happen. So that's what Darrell said. So this morning I was having a conversation with our daughter. We have... um, Three children, as you all know, we share and talk about constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, And our youngest is Genesis. She is seven years old. And her and I were sitting down doing a devotion together. And one thing that I shared with with Genesis was the fact that, you know, she is, um, she's seven. So her mom and her dad, we're her world. You know what I mean? Like we're the Mm -hmm. most important people in her life. And one thing that I shared with our daughter this morning, I said, you know, one relationship that you have is more important than your relationship with your dad, than your relationship with your mom, than your relationship with your brothers. And that's going to be your relationship with God, Genesis, because in order for you to have a good relationship or your future husband, that's years and years and years, you know, from now, a long, one thing, long, long, long time long from now, time you know, future. is your relationship with God, your relationship with Christ is going to be the most important relationship Mm -hmm. that you are ever going to have because mom and dad aren't going to be here forever. And in order for you to be a good spouse, in order for me to be a good mom, in order for, you know, me to be a good wife, I have to have a good relationship with God because out of, without that, I'm a hot mess. And Genesis (laughs) proceeds to tell me, yes. She's like, yes. And I was looking at her like, what? What are you talking about? No, we're all a hot mess without God. And I'm like, okay, I understand what you're saying now, but she, she <laughs> understood what I was saying. That That's the foundation. I can't be a good mom. I can't be a good wife to Christian because by myself, I am. I'm a hot mess. I can't do it. I learn from my relation through my relationship with God, how to be mm. a good wife, how to be obedient, how to yes, be bro. a good mom. You know, I can't do that without first having a relationship, you know, with God. That's the first and foremost. That's the first foundation and relationship that I need to build. And that's the most important relationship in our lives. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Chris has to have a relationship Mm -hmm. with God. I have to have a relationship with God. Otherwise, like we aren't going to be helpful to one another. Like Mm -hmm. Chris and all his flaws and Sharita and all her flaws together, we're just... A, a big hot mess, you know what I mean? Like, but through Christ, like he helps us and, you know, teaches us and, and, and just kind of leads us on that path to be our best selves. So that's one thing that we, that's the foundation. And we're just sharing what's our foundation mm-hmm. and our relationship is that we have to each have a relationship with God. We teach our children, like your, your relationship with me, your relationship with dad is not the most important relationship. Absolutely. And, and this part is, is, so this is one of those foundations that we were talking about and this falls in line with with your prayer so prayer is the pillar that we're talking about 
you know, the relationship with God is one of the keys that we're talking about. This is the essential component, right? Another part of that is the relationship that you have with your spouse, right? So the relationship that you have with your spouse um, needs to be one founded on respect and understanding. So I need to be understanding of everything that my wife and I go through, you know, good, the bad, um, you know, uh, it, it, you go through these things. And sometimes what tends to happen is you tend to think that, okay, well, I, I know better now. So, you know, if you mess up, you know, I'm going to be hard on you. And, and that's not the type of relationship that you want to be in. You know, we all fall short daily. So the relationship that you have with your wife needs to be one or with your spouse needs to be one of respect and understanding because say you have a bad moment, say you have a lapse in judgment. Mm -hmm. What, what do you do? Do you react or do you respond? Most of the time, you react. Mm -hmm. And we need to get better at responding. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it can be anything. It can be from a conversation it, to a decision that you've made mm -hmm. to um, something that you'd like to do together. These things that you do sometimes, as elusive as they may be, when they occur, you have to be able to respond appropriately absolutely and you know this just it's kind of one of those things that i think about you know being newly you know married so whether you are in a new relationship or you've been in a relationship for a long time you know it's important to have that understanding because sometimes you know we all have bad days you know mm -hmm. it's it happens to the best of us. You know what I mean? Like we may not yeah. have a bad life and you know, we, that's what we talk about. You know, don't hey, have, Deborah. it's okay to have a bad day, but don't have a bad life, but we all have bad days. So what happens when your spouse, your loving spouse, your spouse, that's always supporting you always, you know, encouraging you and happy go lucky. What about that one day that they come in and maybe it's the first time that it's ever happened to you in your relationship. What about that one day that they had a bad day at work? What about that one day everything at work kind of went wrong, went left and they come home and they have an, and they're having a rough day. And they're not as encouraging. They're mm -hmm. not as talkative. They're not as, you know, vibrant as they usually are. What do you do? That's where that understanding comes in. You mm -hmm. have to be understanding and recognize, you know, we talked about, you know, that selflessness mm -hmm. and being selfish in a relationship. That's where you have to definitely be selfless because it's not about you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if your spouse isn't all up in your face and trying to do everything, you know, for you that they may typically do or that they may want to do that. That doesn't mean that it's about you. Their, mm -hmm. their, their rough day may not have nothing to do with you. They may just need you to be present. They may just need you to listen. They yep. may just need you to support them. They may just need you to let them be for a little bit. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Because we all, um, we all have those times in our relationship. And Christian and I, when we were talking about this topic, we were thinking, we were reminded of a time where I was definitely foolish. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, I don't need time, you know, to myself. I love my kids. I love being around <laughs> my kids all the time. I don't want to leave them. And and when we first got married, first had kids, it was one of those things where it was hard. It was hard to say, hey, let's go uh, out on a date night. Let's mm -hmm. go and do a weekend, get a weekend getaway. Like seriously, we're military. We don't know anybody here. I'm not leaving my kids with anybody. <laughs> and that was something that I had to learn and grow and it was hard. So my encouragement is to make sure that you do that. Yes. Make sure that you put your relationship first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your kids are one day going to grow up and leave out the house and our kids are important. Like, as you guys know, you see our, our lives, you see us talking about kid, our kids, traveling with our kids, like our, our kids are so... Do our lives with our kids. Do our lives with our kids. Like, we love our kids to life, and we do um, so much with our kids and for our kids. But we have learned the hard way that 
Hey, Camille. Our relationship can't be at the expense of loving, you know what I mean, our kids and doing for our kids because our kids understand. And our, you know, one of our our goals is for our our kids to be a good example uh, for our kids at as to what a good marriage, a good relationship is supposed to look like. I want to see my kids. I want my kids to see me loving my husband because I want my boys to one day have a wife that's going to love them. And if they see me disrespect my husband, if they see me not honor my husband, then they're going to feel like it's okay for a woman to do that to them. One mm-hmm. day, my my daughter is going to be married to a man, and I don't want her to feel like you know what this is. This is how it's going to be in my relationship. I'm going to get my way. I'm going to do what I want. All those different things that you know could happen. Mm-hmm. We want our kids to see what right looks like. What right looks <laughs> like, and it's not mm-hmm. it's not perfect by any means. Absolutely. It's not going to be perfect. None of it is. We said that from the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like soon as we started out, you know, it's not going to be perfect because. This is an imperfect person, and I'm an imperfect person. But, can like you, we started out. Can you start with you being an imperfect person and me? This is an imperfect <laughs> person, and I'm an imperfect person. <laughs> but we serve a perfect God, and we know, like we said, like the relationship that we want to have, we have to create it. That's up to us. It's not just going to magically happen, and it's not something that just happens with one specific person because some people feel like okay i don't have this you know this relationship that i envision because i'm with the wrong person mm-hmm. no you if you want to change the what your relationship looks like mm-hmm. it starts with what you do every day mm-hmm. it starts with your focus is your relationship valuable to you is your mm-hmm. relationship important to you you know what i mean like How much value do you put on your relationship? Mm. Because the value that you put on something tells you how important it is to you. When you go out and you buy a fancy car, you buy that car. You spend thousands of dollars on that car because you feel like that car is worth it. Mm -hmm. Now, if I feel like my relationship is worth it, I'm going to put all of my energy, all of my effort. I'm going to feel like this is important to me. This is valuable to me. So I have to put a lot of investment in this can can i ask you a question sure so if your relationship is important more important than your car Mm -hmm. when was the last time you invested in your relationship Mm. the question now comes to you guys Mm -hmm. what was the last thing that you did for your relationship when was the last time you took a weekend and did something together Mm -hmm. when was the last time you did something that maybe neither of you like, but you want to do something new together. Just together. And you said, and I know for moms, this is really difficult. And I'm I'm saying this because I'm speaking, mm-hmm. I had to speak to myself first and continue to learn and grow, you know, through this is, you know, I have to put my relationship above our kids. You know, just like we said, like our kids are going to one day move out and they're going to have their own relationship, have their own family. And it's going to be me and Chris mm-hmm. sitting here looking at each other like, who are you? Mm-hmm. And what's your name? What, what do you like? What do you, you know what I mean? And I what's don't your want that. Color? What's your favorite color? <laughs> but I don't, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, I want our kids when they leave our house, like we said, because one day they will, when they mm-hmm. leave our house, I want them to know what right looks like. I want them to know what a good relationship is supposed to look like. I want to teach them. We're going to give them the knowledge, but it's up to them to apply them to their life and to their relationship. And, you know, going back to the question about asking, what are you doing for your relationship? I remember the first time I paid for a pair of sneakers. Like, I paid. Like, I worked, I got the shoes, and I paid for them. Hmm. Ain't, ain't nobody stepping on my shoes. Mm-hmm. I would get home. I would clean them off, put them back in the box. Mm-hmm. I mean, but where is that kind of care? Energy, care, yeah. Yeah, energy, that type of focus when it comes to your relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so you get in a, a disagreement with your spouse. Mm-hmm. 
How quick are you to say, I apologize? How fast are you willing to, to say, you know what, that was my bad? You know, I, I shouldn't have been so foolish. I, you know, I didn't even think. I, I reacted and I should have responded. I should have taken the time to, to understand how you are feeling. Man, you know, for me, it's important that you know that I love you, that that this relationship is the most important relationship to me right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of the relationship that we have, you know, my wife knows that even sometimes I might say say it jokingly. I might say, this is the second most important relationship I have. But she knows that the only relationship that's more important than the one that I have with her is the one that we talked about first, is that relationship with with God, right? So we talked about that being the cornerstone. So the relationship with God, that being your center, that's your prayer, right? And we talked about the relationship with your spouse, one fused and infused with, you know, respect and understanding, right? Because you have to have that understanding that Sharita talked about, and you have to have the respect to understand that sometimes if they're having a bad day, sometimes you, you just, you wait. Allow them to come to you. And then you be in a position that you're able to be not only receptive, but encouraging Mm -hmm. in the moment. Because that's what an environment, that foundation that you want, that recharges you does. Mm -hmm. You want every time that you come into the the, the atmosphere with your loved one, that you are just infused with energy. You're, You're like excited. Like It's so funny because... We joke all the time about different things now. And it's like like little things. Like I'm, you know, looking at her and she's like, mm, yeah, I know what you're doing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you don't know what I'm doing. She's like, yeah, yeah, I do. Chris. Right? <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry. I'm embarrassing y'all. Yeah. Or embarrassing my wife. Yeah, so. don't embarrass but, but seriously, mm-hmm. like when you have that type of love, that type of relationship that energizes you, that gets you fired up. You know, there's excitement there. There's energy there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we, we're going to share something with you guys. So we we literally just came from, would you call it a marriage seminar? A it date like, night. Uh, it was like it was a date, like night. A date uh, night. It's a date night. But it was it, it was intentional. Um, and they were talking about, like, different things that you should do. And one of the things that they talked about, and, and it was something that we said we wanted to share, is listening. Right? So when you listen, but you listen with intent, it looks differently and it prevents arguments from starting. So if you're talking with your spouse and they say something, it's important that you give them your undivided attention by repeating to them in the manner that you heard it. So so if I heard you correctly, is this what you said? And, you know, they talked about, you know, being close, so, you know, I would have my face in front of her face and make full eye contact. Don't be awkward. Yes. Don't be awkward. Um, knee to knee, eye to eye, and making sure that you connect, that you you see that this is serious. I really want you to know that I'm listening. <laughs> I'm looking at the delay on the, um, <laughs> on the screen. You know, one of the things that... Um, You know, I was thinking about as as you were saying that was talking about like when when your spouse has that um, that difficult day, you know, Mm -hmm. when it's challenging in in your relationship, you want to always remember that you want to be that person that when your spouse kind of is ready to talk, is ready to need somebody to go to. You want to be that person that they can go to. You Mm want to be that person that is present yep. you know what i mean like not somebody that they feel like okay well that person is angry at me as well so i can't go talk to them and that they're you, top of mind too yeah yep. so you are you're present that's what i mean by present you're there to support them so that you know what when they're ready to talk they've mm-hmm. been they've been right there all along you know what i mean they've been they've been ready and and, and willing to talk to me and to support me whenever i need it you know what I mean? They didn't make it about them. Mm-hmm. So when you make it about you, you make it difficult for your spouse to have someone to go to, to have a shoulder to lean on. And, you know, when you reminded us about having a good relationship with God, like if if, if I have a disagreement with my spouse, 
more importantly, like I want to get to a, a place to where we're at peace because you know what? I know mm -hmm. that when I go pray or mm -hmm. when I have, you know, my time and I, I need something, you know, answered or need to talk to God about something. I already know the first thing that's going to come up is this art with Christian or this. That's going to be the only thing that's going to be on my like that's not going to I'm not going to be able to let yeah. that go before I can move on in my prayer, in my conversation with God, because. I have to make sure that I have peace with him. So sometimes I'm like, you know what? Uh-uh. We ain't about to have, you know, no issues because I got things that I'm I'm praying about, things mm -hmm. that I need, you know, God to do in our lives and our lives. So I'm not gonna let this be a hindrance. It's not worth it. Absolutely. Sometimes it's so it's so it's so minor, it's so petty. And mm -hmm. we need to just be like, nope, you yeah, know what? Go. I'm gonna move past this because it's not worth it. Absolutely. I'm not gonna let this be a hindrance to us. <laughs> having a good relationship to us, setting a good example for our kids. Yeah, absolutely. And so, so the last, the last component that we wanted to talk to about, talk to you guys about tonight is the relationship that you have with your friends. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it has been said that you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. So what are those five people doing to your relationship? Mm -hmm. What are those five people saying about your relationship? What are those five people adding to your relationship? What are those five people doing in their relationship? Mm, because mm. sometimes yeah, it's not even good. about, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, what they're adding to your relationship. Sometimes just Absolutely. like you said, you are the sum of the five people you hang mm -hmm. around. So if what they're doing in their relationship is not, a reflection or not going to contribute to the direction that you, you know, if it doesn't um, mm -hmm. look like the direction that you want to go into your relationship, it's important that, you know what, you may need to not, you Absolutely. know, hang around them so much. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? If we invite a couple over and a woman mm -hmm. is constantly like dogging her husband or saying stuff about, yep. you know, negative stuff about their relationship. That's not good for my relationship. Nope. First of all, I don't want my, you know, kids to see it. And then secondly, I don't want that rubbing off on me. I don't want to, you know, okay, get caught up in the conversation and I end up, oh yeah, well, Chris did so and so and this and this yeah. and that. Nope. You know what? We need friends. We need people around us that are building one another up that want to have a better relationship, want to take their relationship to the next level because just mm -hmm. like I want to grow personally and I don't want to be the same I don't yes. want to be the same person that Absolutely. I was when me and Christian first met overall mm. first of all like, oh, yes. but secondly like I don't want our relationship to be the same I yes. want our relationship to continue to grow the longer we've been married like when we get to that point where we're at 37 years like Miss Jazzy that's watching Woo! like I want our relationship to be <laughs> to be better, not mm -hmm. to just feel like, you know what? What have we done for 37 years? Like, that's a long time. <laughs> I don't want to have been married for 37 years and have absolutely nothing to show for it. I don't even want to be alive for 37 years and, and don't have nothing to show for mm. it. Nonetheless, investing something, my time, my energy mm. into something and have absolutely nothing to show for it. Like, I want to to grow in our relationship. Yes. I want not only our love to grow, mm. but I want our relationship to be able to, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm going back to this because that's that's my motivation to help our kids mm -hmm. know what to look for yep. in, in a, a spouse. Like mm -hmm. I want my daughter to say, hey, you know what? This is how my dad treats me. This is how my dad loves me. Like you're not telling me nothing that I haven't heard before. I don't want my daughter to feel like somebody can just go tell her anything. You, mm -hmm. I've heard that before. Yep. You haven't told me anything new. My dad tells me he loves me every day. My dad takes me out. Mm -hmm. So, so we're gonna have to do more mm -hmm. because or, it or is you're gonna more. have to come correct. You have to come real correct. And and you know what's funny is you talked about something that was that's really important. Like. In relationships, sometimes you have, you know, you, and it's important. Some, some, this is something that we've actually tried to be very intentional about now. We want to invite people over. We want to hang out with people because building relationships is something that we love doing. So whether it's through fellowship, whether it's through a barbecue, whether it's through something, we want to be a good example, right? And sometimes, you know, you, you know, you get, these relationships to come in line and, and, and we talk about things happening for a reason and a time and a season. And that's important. 
one of the things that you want to be very careful of, and I, and I know we've been around people that do this and we try to, um, I, I wouldn't say we try to distance ourselves, but we try to be very careful in, in choosing the words that we choose. And it's when you get around people that are what we like to call one uppers, mm. right? So, so Sharita comes home. She's super excited. Hey, you know, Chris got this on the job today. And then the other person is like, oh, well, so-and-so got, you know, this on the job. And then the next person is like, oh, well, so-and-so did this on the job. Instead of doing that, celebrate one another. Mm -hmm. Man, that's so awesome that your husband did that today. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Man, Chris, you got to keep rocking it, brother. Because yeah, you, you, you're you going to be a great example for the people around you. And that that's what we need. We need better examples mm -hmm. of people around us. Mm -hmm. Versus competing. We talked about this before in one of our very first lives. You can't be competing not only with your with spouse, your spouse right? but you can't be competing with other people. Your, 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 your blessing, your gifts are for, first of all, the blessings that you get are for you to give to others. Bless and release. I just Bless and, yeah. And then the, your yeah. gifts, your gifts are meant to inspire and motivate people because as you come through you're going to see that this one person despite all the things that are going on mm -hmm. they needed that encouragement mm -hmm. so yep. maybe they were having a bad day and if you get into this thing where you're trying to compete with everybody around you mm -hmm. oh you know um you know i see y'all got a minivan like we got this new truck and First of all, that's draining. You know, what I mean? like it's, it's it's just draining. Like I can't sit here and try to like you go up, you say one thing, I yeah. say the next thing. I got this. Like, I I ain't got time for that. Like mm. if I tell you that, you know, I I, I give you um some information. You know, mm -hmm. first of all, yep. regarding an accomplishment or something. Like I don't have the time to sit here and go back and forth. It's like I said what I said, and then we're gonna keep it moving. Just like Desi said up here, bless and release. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're gonna bless and we're gonna release. Cause I'm gonna bless Thank you. you. Desi. You got um, <laughs> you know, you got X, Y, and Z. Congratulations. Let's move on. The the one thing that I you know I did want to share, just yeah. thinking about as you were talking, mm -hmm. is that you know most importantly in our relationships, we have to remember that. There are needs for both spouses. Mm -hmm. And you've probably already heard it before. You've listened to the books with the five love languages or you've heard the books. I always say listen to because I <laughs> that's how I, you know I'm an audio learner. But you read the books um, about the five love language, love and respect. Mm -hmm. And those are they're not just a want in relationships. They're a need. And we have to remember that. Like I can't go into a relationship thinking that, okay, my husband needs X or my wife or my mm -hmm. wife wants X, wants mm -hmm. X, you know what I mean? Or my, my, um, my husband wants X or my wife wants X. It is a need in a relationship. And that's something that we have learned. And if you hear it and if you heard it again, you need to Take heed to it because it's the truth. If you've heard it multiple times, you might need to apply it to, real, to your relationship. It's a need. So if you have a car, right? Do you say your car wants gas? Mm. Hashtag write that down. Your car doesn't <laughs> want gas. In order for your car to function properly, you need to give it gas. You have to go to the gas station and put gas in your car. I can't put orange juice in my car because I feel like putting orange juice or because I have it right here in my refrigerator. My car has a specific need. So I have to go out of my way oftentimes because the gas station is, <laughs> you know, sometimes out of our way. Mm -hmm. I have to go out of my way to make sure that I give my car what it needs. Yep. And my husband has certain needs. Me, your wife, your spouse has certain Absolutely. needs. And if you don't meet those needs already, that's a problem mm. waiting to happen. And yeah. oftentimes, like I laugh because I, you know, I think about when Christian and I first got married, there was things that, you know, I'll hear people that are younger in their relationships say, and I'm laughing like, okay, just wait, you know, get be married for a little more. Don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. Come back to me in a year. Come back to me in two years. You know what I mean? It's funny now. And you let people learn. You let people, you know, grow through it. 
You know, and then oftentimes, because I've heard, you know, older people tell me some of the stuff that I felt like, oh, okay, nope, I'm not going to do that. Oh, I don't need, um, mm-hmm. I don't need, um, time to myself. Oh, me and my spouse, oh, yeah. you know, we, we can spend time together at home. We don't need to go away and, and, and do stuff oh. with just for us. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> and then that's what they did to us. They looked at us like, oh, okay. Yep. We'll see about that. Mm -hmm. But you do, you need those things. There's certain things that you need to do and you need to apply to your relationship and don't look at them as it's just a want. It's something that you need. And if you want to create the relationship that you want, it's not just because it's with a specific person or I hadn't married the right person or I'm not with the right person. Nope. There's certain things that you need to do in your relationship. Not just one time, because we talked about this on mm-hmm. um, the other day when we were talking yeah. about rela- um, relationships and marriages. You know, sometimes we'll do something one time and we think, oh, you know what? It's not working. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't. He's not listening. He's not receptive to it. He didn't. He didn't appreciate it. You know, we mm-hmm. do it one time and then we think, oh, I don't need to do it anymore. Hey, you know, a good example of that is is um, like, say, for example, um, me making the bed. Right. Say it. Say I, I don't normally make the bed. But I make the bed one time and I get home and Sharita doesn't acknowledge that I made the bed. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this isn't about to happen. I'm not I'm not making the bed anymore uh-huh. because you didn't notice that I made the bed. Yeah. You did it one time, Chris. Right. Okay. Sorry. But did you notice? Mm-hmm. The question is, did you notice? Right. And so that's what we often tend to do. Mm-hmm. You know, we open the door the one time. And you know what? It, it, let's be transparent right here. One of the things that I that I, I that I felt like I, I did a good job at, but I was guilty of, is doing one thing one time. You know, mm-hmm. whether it's you know um, telling my spouse that I love you, right? You know, I wasn't great at you know verbalizing it. I felt like because of the things that I was doing, mm-hmm. and I'm speaking to somebody. This might be those people all the way in the back watching the replay, <laughs> but. When you sit there and you think that I said I loved you yesterday Mm -hmm. and that's more than enough, Mm -hmm. you're failing. You are not doing yourself a favor. Not only do you need to verbalize it, but you need to walk it out. So my actions need to line up with what I'm saying, Mm -hmm. but... Oftentimes, women need to hear and be affirmed that you love them. Remember, it's a need. It's a need. You know what I mean? Fill that gas tank. It's a need. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I love you. I love the way you look. I love the way you dress. You look beautiful today. Thank you for always looking sexy. Whatever it is, you need to make sure you're constantly affirming your wife that you you acknowledge Mm -hmm. her. Right? And so it's important because we we tend to lose sight of these things. Mm -hmm. We tend to think, well, she knows I love her. Mm -hmm. She knows she looks good. She knows that I care. Well, did you tell her? Mm -hmm. Did you speak to her? Did you articulate those words to her? How much does she know? You know, is she walking around to to her friend saying, oh, my husband loves me. You know, does she do that? Do people do that anymore? No. And that thing. Okay. <laughs> so, listen. So tonight we talked about a lot of things. We talked about the foundation, right? Prayer. We talked about these three pillars. So it was the relationship with God, the relationship with your spouse, and the relationship with your friends. That relationship with God, solid foundation. It's it's where your your prayer needs to be. It's going to help you grow individually is going to help you better prepare for your spouse. Secondly, that relationship with your spouse is one based on respect and understanding. Lastly, the relationship that you have with your friends, that is one of vulnerability. That's where you you, you become better because of the people around you, the people that are doing the things that you want to do, having that relationship that you want to have, and then you guys are making each other better, you know, because you may have a bad day, and then you turn around and if you have good people around you, they're going to be like, hey, keep your chin up, man. It's just one time. Get back in the get back in the ring. Be like Rocky. Get knocked down a whole bunch of times and just keep getting up. Listen, the intent is just to make it to the last round. 
it initially, it's like, we just got married. Now I want to make it beautiful. I want to make it amazing. I want to make it fulfilling. I want to make this the best marriage that I've ever, ever, ever imagined. And it comes from being intentional. So as you apply these principles to your lives, you're going to have an amazing relationship. Amazing. All right. If you want to connect with us, if you want to learn more, we have amazing tools to help you and your relationship. All right. The only thing we want you to do is make sure you tell your spouse that you love them. Make sure you respect them. Make sure you understand them. Remember your need. Remember their needs. Make sure you remember their needs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, uh, go like our marriage cookbook page. Yeah, go like, like our, our marriage, leadership um, legacy, legacy page. page. And we will see you guys yeah. Sunday, Sunday at, um, at 8. At 8. Take care. So as always, go out and dominate your space. space.